everyone, it's Susanna here with Health Ed Solutions, and today's lesson is on heart murmurs, valve disease, part of our heart murmur series. Don't forget to visit us online at healthedsolutions.com for more free content. Now, let's get started. Stenotic valves can cause heart murmurs because they are stiff and narrow, resisting opening. This makes blood flow more turbulent than normal, which can be auscultated using a stethoscope. Let's compare the timing of heart murmurs caused by stenotic semilunar valves with those caused by stenotic atrioventricular valves. The aortic and pulmonary valves open and close at the same time, and the mitral and tricuspid valves open and close at the same time. So part of determining which valve is diseased is by where a particular murmur is loudest. The four main auscultation sites are the aortic and pulmonic areas, and the mitral and the tricuspid areas. Let's set up a line to show where the normal heart sounds, S1 and S2, occur, and then where murmurs can be best heard when these valves are stenotic. Systole occurs between S1 and S2. Pressure builds up to smoothly open the semilunar valves. S2 is the sound of healthy closing of these valves but stenotic valves don't work this way. The building pressure during systole typically causes the stenotic valve to click open suddenly, like a door that was stuck and then pops free. A rising crescendo of turbulent blood flow passes through the narrow opening, then decrescendos as the pressure in the ventricle drops until the semilunar valve closes. S2 may be quiet or even absent if the valve is quite stiff. Now, let's compare this with stenotic atrioventricular valves. The AV valves open during diastole, then close at the end of it, causing the normal S1 heart sound. After systole, the AV valves should open nicely again, but if one of them is stenotic, like the mitral valve shown here, then the rapidly entering blood presses on it until it may actually snap open. The narrowed opening results in noisy flow into the ventricle. So, semilunar valve stiffness causes a systolic murmur. Atrioventricular valve stiffness causes a diastolic murmur. Regurgitating valves also cause murmurs. These valves don't stay closed and they allow leaking. Again, we'll compare the effects of a regurgitating semilunar valve with those of regurgitating atrioventricular valves. And once again, the site that gives the loudest murmur is a clue as to which valve is affected. Semilunar valves are normally closed during diastole, then open during systole. S2 is the sound caused when these valves close. But if one of the semilunar valves leaks, the aortic valve shown here, then a diastolic murmur can be heard as the blood leaks back into the ventricle through the poorly sealed valve. Atrioventricular valves are closed during systole, then open during diastole. S1 is the sound heard when they close. But if the valve is faulty, the mitral valve shown here, it might not be able to remain entirely closed during systole and may prolapse and then click open part way through systole resulting in an audible murmur. A valve that leaks throughout systole is called a pan-systolic murmur. So, semilunar valve regurgitation causes a diastolic murmur. Atrioventricular regurgitation will cause a systolic murmur. In summary, semilunar stenotic valves cause systolic murmurs. Blood flows in the right direction, but not easily. Atrioventricular regurgitation also will cause a systolic murmur since blood is flowing backwards into the atria during systole. Semilunar valve regurgitation causes a diastolic murmur since blood flows backwards into the ventricle during diastole. Atrioventricular stenotic valves will also cause diastolic murmurs. Blood is flowing in the right direction, but again, not easily. That's it for our lesson today. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to please like and subscribe below.